awesome sauce. Scene one, Apple, take one. Okay guys, so in this video we're going to be making beef bourguignon, I think that's how you're supposed to say it, I ain't French. Doesn't make a difference, but the first thing we're going to do is we're going to end up uh, cutting up some bacon, because we need some bacon fat. And for the amount that I'm cooking, because I'm going to be cooking for one, two, three, four, five, six, like six or seven adults and some kids, I need to have a decent amount. So uh, I'm going to cut halfway through this, and um, I'll end up using this for my bacon fat. And just like all the other times that I do this, you basically want to cut these into uh, small pieces. And then now what we're going to do is we're going to end up uh, cutting up some meat um, for the beef. And I ended up getting two kinds of meat simply because they only had one of the ones that I wanted to use. So I had no choice but to get the one of the others. Okay, so um, basically ended up got some tri-tip right here. And then I also end up having a piece of um, chuck roast. And we want to cut this into pieces that are about like two inches by two inches roughly. So let me just kind of get this out of the way. And then we also want to kind of get uh, any large chunks of fat off if there is big pieces of fat. Like this stuff right here probably wouldn't hurt to have it come off. If you ever find a piece of membrane like that, get rid of it. So essentially that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do it with all the pieces of meat. So we're going to take this bacon fat, we're going to take the bacon out, we're going to turn this on high. We're going to make this nice and hot. And um, as far as these pieces of uh, meat, we want to sear them. And we don't want to overcrowd the pan because if we do, it'll, it'll start like um, steaming instead of searing. And then we're going to put some salt and pepper on these guys each, each time around. You see all that little burnt bits on the bottom? That's a massive, massive flavor. And that's a good thing. So now that we got all that done, I'm going to throw two onions in here. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to saute these guys. We want them to be a little translucent. But along with these onions, I'm going to throw some carrots in. A little bit of salt. A little bit of black pepper. And the temperature right now is still on high, um, or medium high, I, I should say. So we are giving these guys a nice little caramelization, if you will. So I've got some uh, fresh thyme from my garden that um, I'm going to be putting in here. And I'm going to be putting a little bit more time in. Oh, just lost the. Well, a little bit later on down the line as well. But this is a big flavor for this. I also end up adding rosemary, which is untraditional, quite honestly. But I, I think it really enriches the flavor of this to like the ump tenth degree. Okay. Just this by itself smells really damn good. So this is uh, fresh rosemary from the garden that I'm also throwing in here. Okay. It adds just a little something. Then you'll see also some of these juices from the carrots and the onions are starting to deglaze this pan as well. That's good news. So let's give this a couple more minutes. And then we'll take everything out of there. We'll throw the meat back in of all things. Very awesome. 
So we got that. I'm going to throw my meat back in along with the juices. And now I'm going to sprinkle some flour over that. And we're going to kind of just move these guys around, let that flour kind of get cooked a little bit. The meat looked seared at one time, and now it doesn't look seared. Some of it does. It's all right, though. That's okay. Okay, so now I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm moving the meat over so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. You see all that, that goodness down there? We need to deglaze it. And that basically just means we're going to be getting all that pieces up. And I'm going to turn the flame off because I'm going to be adding wine. Now, typically, you would use burgundy. Okay, I'm going to be using some marsala that was left over from um, my chicken marsala. Okay. And we want to kind of spin this stuff around. And I turned the flame off because the last thing I want is this to ignite. Okay. Um, if it was just a small pot and I wasn't using such a high flame, I'd be cool with it. But um, I'm going to be using this meat and everything to kind of almost act as a scouring pad to try to remove everything off the bottom here of this pan. I'm going to add just a little bit of salt. This is parsley. This is uh, thyme from my garden. I'm put a couple of bay leaves. This is garlic. Now you can use tomato paste. I'm going to be putting some uh, roasted diced tomatoes in this. It's not traditional, but you could use tomato paste. I'm just telling you what I'm doing because I'm trying to add a little bit more flavor to this. This is beef broth. I'm going to add a little bit more salt to this. So here's our tomato paste. Last thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and put our onions and carrots back in. And it just so happens I got the perfect amount of liquid. Okay, so this is where the fun begins because now what we have to do is we have to put this inside of an oven right around 350, 325 um, with the lid on it. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to let this stuff cook for like three hours, maybe three and a half. And we're still not done yet. But we have a good start. Yeah, that. That noise means that it's time to put this in the oven. So I'm going to go ahead and put the lid on this guy. And I'm going to even be using French uh, uh, pots and stuff. And I'm going to be using Lay uh, Creu Set. So that's what we're going to be doing. It's going to be using, that's a good brand, Lay Creu Set. Better than that Creuset stuff. So um, I cut up some rusted potatoes and I'm boiling them and I put some rosemary inside the water along with some salt when they're about 80 percent cooked I'm gonna, I'm gonna pour the water out and I'm gonna transfer them over to a baking dish or a casserole dish okay so now they are out of the boiling water and um, I overcooked them ever so slightly but um, right now I'm gonna hit it with some salt paprika Remember that bacon from earlier? I don't really want to waste anything. Well, let's face it, bacon's awesome. This is just a little bit of fresh thyme from the garden, it's not a lot. And this is fresh rosemary from the garden. And I'm cutting it up into little pieces so that way nobody's ever going to get a huge piece of rosemary but the flavor is there a stick of butter I'm gonna put a little bit of olive oil over the top of this parsley so this is a little bit of black pepper this is a little bit of granulated onion and this is a little bit of granulated garlic. This bastard is going to go in the oven 
and I'm going to put it on there for about maybe 375 and maybe like the last 15 minutes or so of it cooking is when I'm going to jack the heat up to maybe like 4 or 425 and I'm going to uh, have the broiler on it. Okay so it's been in there for a couple few hours and now I'm going to be removing the lid and we basically end up having this and it smells pretty damn good in here um, but once again we're going to be removing stuff um, again, because that just seems to be like an ongoing thing with this dish, but the meat right now is very, very tender. I mean, it'll just, I mean, basically fall apart on you. Um, but I want to remove all of the big stuff out of here um, and then leave just the, the sauce because we need to reduce the sauce down. One way you can do it is you just end up uh, taking a slotted spoon and just, you know, d do all that. Or you can take this and put it through a colander. Um, and then just get the, the liquid out, which is what I'm going to do because I think it's going to be easier. Okay, let's turn this back on. And we are going to reduce this until it's kind of like a thin syrup. Now, I don't know if this has enough salt right now, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of stir it. I'm going to put a little bit on my spoon here and let that cool. For me, I have to put it in my mouth and spit it right out. But I need to find out if there's enough salt. This is going to reduce, okay? So if it tastes just right now, when it reduces, it's going to even be more salty. So you have to keep that in mind. But I'm going to add one more thing to this to make it really, really rich and to just bring out a bunch of flavors. Sometimes people put this in the beginning. I'm doing it now. That's butter. And then as soon as that reduces, we have one more thing to make that goes to it and then we'll be golden we'll be ready to serve because the, the last thing we have to do is mushrooms okay so while that's on the back burner doing what it's got to do throwing a pan right here I'm going to go ahead and let that water get out of there I always clean my pans before I start cooking with them so it looks like it's getting hot enough we're going to put some olive oil inside here you know, so we're going to put a little bit more because we're going to be doing a couple of things with this. I'm going to throw a container of these in there. Ooh, that's a lot of these. This is uh, Himalayan sea salt. But I want to saute these guys. So I got these uh, baby onions cooking and everything. Cocktail onions as they call them. Cocktail onions are these. I think they just pickle them. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the, my spoon to see if this, this back here is good enough. And basically, if it grabs to the back of your spoon like that, technically it's good enough. Okay, But I want it to be a little bit thicker. These guys right here, I want them to be kind of like a golden brown. They're going to end up losing some moisture and stuff. I've added some black pepper to this as well as some salt, you know, just like always. Um, but I want these guys to be sauteed you know um, a lot of times like uh, when you're making this dish that they're not as sauteed as what I want them to do I mean what I want them to be but I want these guys to be like candy almost so I'm gonna let these guys go for a while we're still not done because after this I got to do the mushrooms all right so I think that the rear is, is good enough the sauce back there so uh, I'm gonna end up putting all of the meat and the carrots and everything back inside because I don't want these to um, dry out in any way because right now it's perfect. We'll just kind of let this stuff set in its own awesomeness. If I can find that bay leaf again. But that should be pretty good. I'm going to put the lid back on it and I'm going to leave it alone. That is going to work. That's going to work. Okay, so um, these guys are sautéing, and just like I did with the um, beef and the carrots and everything, what I'm going to do is when these guys get a little bit more golden, I'm going to pour them through the colander, and then I'm going to put the oil that now is infused with the onion back inside this pan, along with a stick of butter. And then from there, I'm going to throw my mushrooms in that bad boy. Alright, so we got that stuff back in there. Let me just make sure that I got all of this back in. Get that nice onion oil in there. 
and now these onions can be thrown on top of the um, beef and carrots and make sure that that is at an acceptable level here. So before this stuff starts browning, I'm going to go ahead and throw my mushrooms in there. And I've got uh, two different kinds. I've got button mushrooms as well as baby bellas. And it's going to look like it's overflowed. You're going to be like, oh my god, it's too much. Now these guys are going to cook down quite, quite a bit. Um, but I want to put my salt. So parsley. I'm going to be putting dried thyme in this. Black pepper. And let these guys cook down. Every time that you, you, you cook something else like on the outside, so like, you know, first we had the onions and now we're, we're doing the mushrooms and stuff, you want to think of it as like a completely separate meal, you know, so, you know, you salt this one exactly like the way that you wanted to taste it if this were to be like a meal by itself, you know, and the same thing with the onions and whatnot. So when you mix them all together, it doesn't taste like you're lacking something. And these mushrooms are just going to absorb all of that onion oil the butter and it's just going to make this dish really rich now if you want these mushrooms to have even more flavor you can pour some of that beef stock in there remember that beef stock okay so now that they're down and we have that beef stock inside there and we got that oil inside there we're good and I'm going to tell you why because that that stuff is going to start evaporating that water and then all those flavors are going to get sucked in those mushrooms and then so every mushroom is just going to be like pure heaven sorry about the dishwasher in the background but you gotta wash dishes sometimes you know but look at that look at how these mushrooms are looking now that's like pure heaven right there pure awesome sauce so what we're going to do now with that oil being the way that it is I'm going to pour this on top of the um, onions and there's these few mushrooms that are left over inside here. I'm going to have my wife taste them and have her tell me if it needs to have uh, more salt or something. Chances are it doesn't. Okay, so you can go ahead and taste them. Wow, that's, that's a lot, honey. Looks like a lot, but here, have a couple more onions. Too. I know you like them. I just need to know if it needs salt, I mean taste. Oh my god, it's really good. Oh my god, look at that meat. I know. You ain't got to tell me, babe. The first one was, I mean, it couldn't be any perfect. Er. <laughs> More perfect? Yeah. More perfect. So we got my nephew getting ready to try this, and then now I need to go. For me, it's a big thing. Is, is, is there enough salt? I don't know. That's one thing I can't, I can't tell by the smell. So... It is what it is. So you got your taters, and then I just need to know if either one of those really needs salt. Okay. All right, which one? Which one did you say is hotter? Potatoes. Okay. You can see steam coming off those bastards. Fucking. The meat just like falls apart. Mm-hmm. These are onions. Mm-hmm. There's like a sweetness to it also. Mm -hmm. like, like, you know how your chicken marsala, it was like, like there was like a little bit of sweetness to it? Mm -hmm. Like the potato, like not the Does potatoes, it need salt at all? No. Okay. No, this doesn't need salt at all. Oh, damn. Actually, this, this reminds me of your chicken marsala. This is like... Really well, I used marsala wine mm -hmm. instead of burgundy. Yeah, this is hella good. I'll definitely give this a 10 out of 10. This is like... And like, the onions... I don't know if they're supposed to taste like onions, but like, they taste like peas. Yeah. Like, that's pretty... That, and the carrots are just... Yeah, that's... That's bomb. It almost tastes like... I don't want to say like breakfast, but it's almost like... um. Oh, like hash browns, yeah. yeah kind of like, like, kind of like yeah. um, home fries, they call them. Yeah. But this shit, dude, this is honestly, 
It's, it reminds me of chicken marsala, but I really like how sweet it is, and um, there's not like there's not like too little of meat or anything. There's not too little of mushrooms or carrots, and um, the onions and I already said mushrooms. I'm pretty sure, but oh. and you know how people like every time they want to eat, they need like a piece of meat in their um. Like in their bite or something. Yeah. No, I don't think I don't think for um, this you can just get a whole thing of vegetables and you don't even need it. The sauce is honestly crazy. Like, like I honestly think the sauce like makes the whole meal. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This is a ten out of ten meal. Absolutely. Cool beans. Cool beans and awesome sauce, not hot sauce. <laughs> awesome sauce. So this is going to be uh, Hunter's last uh, taste testing uh, thing for me for a while. He's going to be going back to Arizona, so we're probably not going to hear from him for a while. Yeah, sorry I can't make your guys' uh, make you guys uh, laugh or anything. You know? Be the comedian in this. You never really made anybody laugh anyway. All you do is um, fucking cuss. <laughs> no. So I was telling Lori I was going to end up putting that on top of the potatoes, and she's like, "Nah, I want you to keep it separate." I'm like, All right, fine. Um, it just made sense to me to fucking just throw it on there so that they would absorb the sauce. Um, I don't know if I entirely want that, but like... Well, sometimes they serve this on bread. What? Sometimes they serve this on bread. Like the stew? Or the potatoes? Or like both? This, the, well, I guess you'd call it a stew, yeah. The roast, or... Damn. Um, let's let's let that like. See, because I think the potatoes with it would probably add, like add make it like you know heartier. No, yeah. Um, I want I want to let this sit for like like a minute or two because that's um that one bite was like it it almost it, it like I don't know how to there were so many flavors I couldn't even wrap my head around it honestly. Like if you mix them, it's even better than just eating them separate. I thought so too. All right, dudes. Well, that's it. You got to see it. That's the beef of bourguignon or whatever, bourguignon or whatever. I ain't French. I just know how to make it. So, <laughs> anyway, till next time. Talk at you later.